section 1.3 using midpoint and distance formula. The midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So we have segment AC, B is the midpoint because it divides the, this AC segment into two congruent segments and I show that by the marks here. So segment AB is congruent to segment BC which means those two lengths are the same. A segment bisector is a point, ray, line segment, line, or plane that intersects the segment at its midpoint. I just have one example here. I have segment AB with a midpoint M. Notice I put these to show that it's equidistant between those two. And here I have line L that intersects uh, segment AB at that location. So I know that segment AM is congruent to segment BM and the length of, of AM is equal to the length of BM because these are bisectors. The L is the bisector of segment AB. Cuts it in half. Alright, so how can we use algebra then to uh, determine the lengths of those uh, bisected parts. So we have a line segment here. We can call it whatever, say that's A and B and our middle is M. These two marks mean that this segment AM is congruent to MB, which means M has to be exactly in the middle. And I want to determine what the length of these two are but so to do that I have to figure out what X is. So if I know then that this is the midpoint and uh, so I know that AM is equal to MB and AM is the same as 4X minus 1 which has to equal 3X plus 3. So now I just have to solve for x. So I need to put all my x's on one side and all my numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract 3x. I'm going to add 1. Those cancel. Those cancel. 4x minus 3x is x. 2 plus 1 is 4. So I know x has to equal 4. So the distance from a to m then is going to be 4 times 4 minus 1. And that would equal 16 minus 1, which is 15. And that should mean that this side here would also equal 15. Let's check and see. So MB, the length of those, has to equal 3 times 4, because the X is the same for both of these plus 3. And that equals 12 plus 3, which also equals 15. So those are the same. So the distance from A to M is 15, and the distance from M to B is also 15. So that is a bisector. Alright, now when we're dealing with an XY coordinate plane, we can also find midpoints of segments using a formula that looks like a coordinate. It has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate because our midpoint has a coordinate, an x and a y. So we have to determine each of them individually. And all we're really doing is we're finding the average between these two points here. So we're finding the average of the x's and the average of the y's. Well, how do you find the average? Well, you add up the two, you add up the, the number of numbers that you have and divide by how many. Well, in this case, we're only averaging two numbers. And that's these numbers on the endpoint. So we're going to add those together and divide by 2. And that's what the x sub 1 plus x sub 2 represent. One of these two numbers, the 4 and the 1, one of them is going to be x sub 1, the other one's x sub 2. It doesn't make any difference which one's which because you're adding, it's commutative, so you can reverse the order and get the same answer. So we could say this was x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y sub 2. 
we could have switched these around and it wouldn't have made any difference. We'd still get the same answer. All right, so using our formula here for the midpoint, we're going to take our x's and add them together. So we have 4 plus 1 over 2. And then do the same thing with the y's. So we have 2 uh, minus 3 over 2. And, it, and like I said, it doesn't matter which one goes where because it's commutative. As long as you, if it's negative, as long as you keep the sign with it, we're good. So here we have 4 plus 1 is 5. So we have 5 over 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1 over 2 would make that a negative 1 half, which tells me then that this midpoint right here, the coordinates of that midpoint are going to be 5 halves or 2 and a half and negative 1 half. So if we go over 2 and a half and down 1 half, we should end up at that point right there. Sometimes they'll give us the midpoint and one of the endpoints, and we have to find the other endpoint. So we substitute in what we know and, and what we don't know. We can still say this is x sub 1, y sub 1, and down here this one could be x sub 2, y sub 2, just so we know where to put them in if we put them in up here. And our midpoint is what it's going to equal when we get finished. So we have to do these separately. We're going to find the x value of this point, and then we're going to find the y value of this point. We're going to create e uh, equations for each of those points. So let's look at the x's first. We know the midpoint of the x has to equal 2. So 2 has to equal this part right here. Well, what do we know? We know our x sub 1, they gave us that, but we don't know the x sub 2. And we know what this number is. So let's plug in what we know. x sub 1 is 1, so we're going to put a 1, and then we're going to add to that x sub 2 over 2. We don't know what this is, that's what we're trying to find. So now we just have to solve for x sub 2. First thing I would do is multiply both sides by 2 to get that 2 out of the denominator. That way those will cancel. So we have 4 equals 1 plus x sub 2. And then we just have to subtract 1. So x sub 2 is going to equal 3. So we know that this x value of that point has to be 3. And then we do the same thing with the y's. Well, our midpoint on of our y is 1, so we know it has to equal 1. And our y sub 1 was 4, so we know we have 4 plus y sub 2 over 2. So I don't know what that y sub 2 is. Multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2. So 2 equals 4 plus y sub 2. Move the 4 over by subtracting. So y sub 2 has to equal negative 2. So we know this value here is negative 2. So our point, this endpoint, has to be 3, negative 2. Okay, the next formula we're going to talk about is the distance formula. The distance formula gives us the length between two points on an xy coordinate plane when we know both coordinates. Okay, the x and the y value of both coordinates. How they came up with this. They used the Pythagorean theorem, but they, they know from here to here that distance is going to be x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It's going to be this the difference here. Uh, we learned that back in a previous section. The distance from here to here is going to be y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Now notice they use the absolute value like we did when we were determining distance before because we always want distance to be a positive number. So it doesn't matter what these numbers are and, and if this comes out negative then we just change it to its positive value. That's what the absolute values do. Okay, so we know this distance is absolute value of x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 
This distance is the absolute value of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 and then our hypotenuse of this right triangle is our AB distance which is what we're trying to find. So by using the Pythagorean theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared if we substitute what we did here into this equation, our c squared was our distance here. So that's why it'd be ab squared. It'd be that length of segment ab and then we have to square it. And it's going to equal the distance of a, if we call this a, this one b and this one the c. Distance a is that absolute value of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 and then we have to square it. Well, when you square an absolute value, it's always going to come out positive. So we don't need the absolute value anymore. So we just have the x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and then we had to square it. Same with the y values here. The absolute value of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 is the same as the b of our Pythagorean theorem. We don't need the absolute value anymore because we know it's going to come out positive because of the squared. Anything squared will come out positive. Okay, so the last step then is we have to move, get rid of the squared on this side of, of our equation and to do that we just take the square root of both sides. So we end up with AB equal to the square root of all this which is our distance formula. So that's how they came up with it. So now to work a problem we only have to know the coordinates of x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, substitute them in and then we make it work. All right, so we have these two points. We have R, which is at uh, location 2, 3 on our x, y coordinate plane, and point S, which is at location 4, negative 1 on our x, y coordinate plane, and we're trying to find the distance between those two points. Okay? And if you need to, you can draw this out. So here's R. Here's S, and we're trying to find this distance right here between those two points. All right? So we have to designate which one's X sub 2, which one's y, uh, X sub 1, and Y sub 2, and Y sub 1. It doesn't matter which one you put where. If I say this is X sub 2, or excuse me, X sub 1 and Y sub 1, and this one X sub 2 and Y sub 2, that's fine. I could have made these my x sub 1, y sub 1, and these my x sub 2, y sub 2. It doesn't make any difference as long as the subscripts are the same for each point. Okay, so if we look at our formula up here, then we're going to go rs, because that's what we're looking for here instead of ab. It's going to be the square root of x sub 2, which was 4, minus x sub 1 is 2, and then we have to square that plus y sub 2, which is negative 1, whoops, excuse me, minus y sub uh, 1, which is 3, and then we have to square that, and then we'll take the square root of that whole thing. So 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16, so we end up with the square root of 20. So the distance from R to S is the square root of 20. Now you could simplify this because I know 20 is the same as 4 times 5. We can take the square root of the 4 and this could equal 2 times the square root of 5 if we wanted to simplify that.